she is now Ellen DeGeneres. I can't hear you. Everybody scream. All right, guys, did I have a show for you today? I am so excited to announce two very special guests that I'm sure you're all so, like, super pumped to meet. First of all, we have Hester Prynne. She can teach you something about getting an egg. Come on in. How are you? Oh my gosh, you look great. How are you? Thank you. Oh, I'm great. Sit down right there while I introduce our next guest, Daisy Buchanan. Come on in, sweetheart. Oh, look at you. You look fab. All right, girls. So, let me go pull up my questions that I have. So how do you guys like the 21st century? I don't know yet. It's a little weird here, but I guess it's okay. All right, Daisy, what about you? I really love the 21st century. It's so nice that everyone has like rights and stuff. Oh, well, it is a privilege of being a woman in the 21st century. Anyways, well, I'm glad. So the reason you guys are both on the show today is because I was reading your books, and by the way, I love them. They're so awesome. And I still have so many unanswered questions. I mean, with the help of science and my money, of course, I was able to pull you from fiction to talk to all of us. How is that crowd that's here so fun? All right. So before the show, I asked my audience to tweet in questions. The first one I have for you is for you, Hester. How did the Scarlet Letter make you feel, especially having your daughter Pearl there to constantly remind you of your sin? Oh, my Pearl. Hmm, my Mary, that is quite a question. Well, I was not cross to wear the letter because I knew I did wrong. I was not ashamed to wear it. My, it was my past, and my past does not control with me now. I love us Pearl and would never give us her away. I am proud to be her mother. Oh, so that sweet. I think she deserves a round of applause. Anyway, so the next question is for you, Daisy. Now, I think we all are eager to hear the answer for this one. Why did you not attend Gatsby's funeral after all he did for you? Oh, my soul. This question really breaks my heart. When I found out Gatsby had been killed, I had a terrible feeling in my stomach. For some reason, I had a strange feeling that I had something to do with his death. Even if I wasn't there or had even talked to George in my life, once the word got around to me that he was dead, my heart died a little. I love him so much, and for him to be gone from my, from my life forever is such a strange and very sad thing to experience. If, <laughs> at first, I thought I was going to go to the funeral, but then I realized that Gatsby was gone from my life forever. And I knew it would only make Tom more upset if I went. I thought it would be time to focus on Tom completely, because he's the only man left in my life right now. I decided that going to Gatsby's funeral would only cause more pain than good, and decided it was better for everyone if I just let Gatsby's close friends attend the funeral, and not the woman he really loved, who was also cheating on her husband for him. <laughs> Wow. Unbelievable. Daisy, that is such a heartbreaking story. I feel for you. So, Hester, how has this trial altered you as a person and your outlook on life? And during this trial, I feel as though I've become more humble and charitable towards the people in Massachusetts Bay where I do live. I've also realized that everyone is guilty of having sinneth in their hearts, and every sinneth is the same in the eyes of God. I have grown this as a person and also matured by wearing this A. Oh, well, do you feel sympathy for your ex-husband Chillingsworth since you did cheat on him? I do not. Why? Well, you see, after seeing the hateth in his heart and how evil he was to Dintail, I had nay sympathy. How could it for someone that was so disobedient towards the worketh of God? <laughs> Yikes, that's a stinger. So Daisy, the notion of the American dream figures prominently in your story. What do you think the American dream is? Have you found it? And did Gatsby? Well, Ellen, I don't think I have found it yet. I don't think Gatsby ever did either. Sure, I have extraordinary riches, but I was never happy and never content. There was always something missing. At first, I thought it was Gatsby, but that didn't end up being it. I sometimes feel that the American dream is unreachable, and maybe it just isn't for me. Gatsby also had everything he wanted, except his marriage to me, which I wouldn't give him. 
Were you in love with Gatsby? Or were you in love with the idea of Gatsby? This is a really tough question. Thinking about our past, everything was so beautiful and simple, but he reappeared back in my life years later. So many things had changed. Of course, I will always care about him, but to be quite honest, I'm not really sure if I was in love with him. I would have left home if that was the case. Wow, folks, what a show am I right? Thank you so much for answering our questions. Do you guys have anything else to add to tell our audience? You go first, Hester. I would just say that to every woman out there, just do what your heart desires and whatever you feel is right, because in the end, God does forgive all your sins. <laughs> Such great advice. What about you, Daisy? A little party never killed nobody. <laughs> well, that was great advice. <laughs> Anyways, well, thank you so much for attending my show. Let's give some handshakes out here. Thank you. You are so welcome. Oh, Safe God. travels. Oh. <laughs> Daisy, come get your child, man. Oops. Anyways, so that concludes our show, but now I would like to add our next seat. Oh my god. Now for our next segment, we got the privilege of meeting one lucky person and asking her some trivia questions on these two books to give her money for her college tuition. So let's go see how well she did. All right, we are here at the lucky individual's house who's gonna win some college tuition. All right, are you ready? I'm ready, let's go. Here goes nothing. Gatsby, every question you get right is a thousand dollars towards your choice of a college. Are you ready? Yes. I hope you've been studying and reading your English books. Here we go. Where did the Scarlet Letter take place? Massachusetts Bay Colony. Congratulations, that's a thousand dollars. Who was Hester Prince's baby daddy? Dimsdale. That's two thousand dollars. Who killed Mr. Gatsby? George Wilson. Ding ding, that's correct. Who, or sorry, where did Mr. Gatsby live? Westing. Yes, that is also correct. What was on Wolfshine's cufflings? Um, molars. That is correct, unfortunately. <laughs> Who narrates the great Gatsby? Nick Carraway. Good job, this is a smart one. Miss <laughs> Moore, she deserves an A. <laughs> Anyways, what was the name of Hester's daughter? Pearl. Correct. <laughs> Chillingsworth pretended to be what type of profession? A doctor. Also correct. And now, a final question for $10,000. Maria, how does Hester earn a living? Needlework. Correct. She has won $10,000 and a free college tuition. Oh Congratulations for participating in this week's Ellen's Challenge. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and we'll see you on the next show of Ellen. Thanks, y'all. Stay tuned because next week we'll be having a special interview of Othello and Desdemona asking about their relationship of love, lust, romance, and worst of all, death. It will be an episode that you will never forget. Love you guys!